Hey everybody, we have a huge update for you guys. So a whole bunch of cars have left the collection in the last few months. Haven't really gone over a lot of them. We're gonna go over them today. You're gonna to be shocked by some of them that left because they were near and dear to me. But at the end of the day, there was a great reason for them to go. I also wanna point out that we have a brand new vehicle that we have not told you about. Now the Aventador that I just got, we did tell you about last week. I think that probably shocked some. I've been enjoying the hell out of it, but we got an Another $500,000 vehicle that's all new that I've really, really enjoyed. Tommy has enjoyed, my wife has enjoyed. It is a great member of the collection that I'm about to go in front of, so we're gonna stop right here. We have a whole bunch of cars coming in soon, which is part of the reason why it is the thinnest I've ever seen this garage right now. Granted, a bunch of cars are in the shop, so this is definitely not the full collection right here. Always cars in and out of the shop. We did a maintenance video that will shock you. I think I spent around a million dollars a year maintaining, modifying, upgrading these cars. You guys can go check that out if you wanna see how expensive it is and how often they're out of the garage. While you're here, you should hit that subscribe button right now because we have a lot of awesome, awesome content coming up. And I've also got an awesome video on why I finance several cars in this collection. You'd be surprised, but a whole bunch of people in this business, influencers actually do that. And there's a really, really good reason why I do it. And we're gonna go over that in that video. I think that's gonna be one of our best ones yet. Hit that subscribe button right now. Of course, I'm gonna keep the Lamborghini Urus. That is my daily, that is the car I drive most. It is tuned, it is modified, it has exhaust. It's just a great car, easy decision. The Rolls-Royce Phantom, yes, it is brand new. I did not get it long ago. Thought I would love it and enjoy it. I waited a year to get it, but once I got it, I realized that I have such awesome cars at this point that it's just not getting driven, right? This isn't only a car you drive to a nice dinner, or if you're trying to impress Tommy's mom. That's really it, and I've done both. So at the end of the day, this has gotta go for sale right now at Chicago Motor Cars. And a big part of the reason is because I just got in that Cadillac Escalade V-Series just a few months ago. And that, that becomes my luxury cruiser because it's so badass. The thing burbles, it's fast, it's comfortable. And so the Escalade V is also staying. And that's part of the reason this is going. McLaren 765LT, come on. This is, this is one of the most fun, rare, awesome cars that I fully spec myself. Tune down pipe, shoots fire. This thing will probably stay in my collection forever. This is never going bye-bye. My beloved Porsche 918, I actually pondered for a little bit about selling that. I think I discussed it in the prior vlog, but you know what? I was an idiot. That thing is absolutely staying. I love that car. It is the most fun car to drive out of the entire collection. And uh, it's just in the shop right now getting a wrap done. It's gonna be a totally different color. It's gonna look sexy. Just be sure to keep watching our stuff so you can see what that looks like. It's gonna be great. While I'm talking about Porsches, the GT3 RS. This is one of my beloved cars, the cop lover, as we put on the license plate. That one has gone bye-bye. Now, at the end of the day, Several of these decisions were made because when you have a garage stacked with hypercars and then half million dollar plus supercars, it's hard to go drive a Porsche GT3 RS when you have a 918, when you have a Senna. It just didn't get driven. I mean, I would just go pick the hypers. And of course, my all new, new to me, 2016 Lamborghini Aventador SV Roadster. I've been having too much fun with this thing for the last few weeks. I sold one, regretted it. So this one may be a forever car as well. I'm just saying it. Aventador Hamilton collection forever. Of course, this is the only hypercar I have bought twice with the exception of one that I'll bring up in just a second. We wrecked the first one. For those of you just uh, joining the channel, here's some footage of the, the wonderful wreck. But I loved it so much that I had to go buy another one. It just took me a while to find the right spec that I loved. This one is super cool with the diamond flake in the paint. It's just an all around awesome car, in my opinion. This and the Veyron are the best two hypercars for the buck. Now it is worth pointing that the Countach recently left the collection because I basically traded it in for this here at Aventador. So bye bye Countach. Love you baby girl. Side note, if you didn't watch the prior vlog, I actually traded in my old Pagani for the Senna and the Bugatti Veyron. That one also went bye bye, but that's kind of old news. Talking about a Wyra's, the Wyra is also in the shop. I am absolutely keeping that car. So night and day difference between the new Wyra and the old Wyra, just the drivability, the fact that it's a roadster, the way that it looks, everything is better about this new car and I love it. And I don't foresee that Pagani uh, Wyra roadster going anywhere anytime soon. Why is that one in the shop, Tommy? Which one? The, oh, because the seat. So it had a bunch of service done and now it's hung up for three weeks because the seat simply has a bracket that's having a problem and clicking it back. Yeah, so some people when they get in cars, they like sit down and like move their feet over and Steve just like his whole body, he like uh -huh. body slam the seat and the seat and the wire just, it's not working as well as it, it used cracks. to. <laughs> I've broken two couches at home because I just like to get home and literally cracked them right in half. That's kind of my thing. And he's morbidly obese. I don't know if you guys could tell, but that also <laughs> plays a role. 
Speaking of Tommy, this is, this is a funny example of a car that I never, ever drive. I literally keep this for you, for Aiden behind the camera, and for Natalia. The only time he drove it this year is when every other car was in service. He had nothing but the R8, and he took it home for one day. It was like, yeah, yep. it was fun. I actually enjoyed it. And then it just sits here, and then we drive it. But the funny thing is it's a 1,000 horsepower twin turbo Alpha R8, the only maritime blue color that they built that year. I just, it, it's kind of the same victim as the Porsche GT3S where why drive this when you have all these other cars? And that is why I drove it, because they were all gone, like you said. Give it up for Steve. <laughs> I'm gonna go over another three that I sold pretty quickly here because didn't really enjoy them, wasn't driving them. They had to go bye-bye. 2006 Ford GT, probably be worth some money in the future. Good investment car, just wasn't driving it. So if I don't drive it, I'm not gonna keep it, I'm sorry. Nissan GTR. <laughs> That's all the time that one deserves. And then the Ferrari Testarossa, got it. Didn't enjoy it as much. Getting rid of the Countach, the E28 M5 ultimately failing and getting disseminated and ruined by that shop. I kind of lost my 80s fleet, so that one just kind of didn't make sense at the end of the day. Are you shocked yet on all the vehicles that have gone out of the collection? Because I kind of am as I sit here and go through it. Bugatti Chiron also left. We ended up selling that, but I have a brand new one coming in. So that was the one that was the only other hypercar that, that I also ordered twice. And we have an awesome spec coming in, and that is going to be here in like two to three months. So hang out for that one. The McLaren P1 also left the collection. That one we have not made public at all, like many of these. I didn't really enjoy driving that. The gas was too feathery. It was very jerky. It was tight. Like race mode was horrible. The suspension, it just, it wasn't a great car. It just, had to go bye-bye it was it was time there's actually a purpose for that i traded it into uh, the dealer that's helping me procure my rimats nevera or as you americans call it the ramac nevera that one's going to be here in like a month that one is going to be so fun i guarantee you that's my new favorite car once it comes in and i can't wait until that hits here so a lot of other new cars actually coming in the pagani utopia the koenigsegg yesco koenigsegg jamera time and i are actually going to be heading out to the koenigsegg factory in just a few weeks we're going to create some awesome content with a tour so if you haven't hit that subscribe button you really need to hit that by now because so much good content coming out we're also going to be the first people to ever spec the jamera at the actual factory so watch out for that video coming real soon too what else is coming in tommy there's more we have another escalade yeah, v on order yeah another escalade v a second one you just bought another hypercar that we will oh uh, yeah we'll cover that in the video soon but that thing's going to be crazy I I can't unveil that one, but money is down. There are only 12 of this variant that are gonna be made, period, and I was able to secure one, and I am very thankful for it. And no other influencer has one of these cars yet that no. I know about. And it's one of the fastest cars ever made, yes. which is cool. Working on breaking top speed records too. That's gonna be so fun. Another very cool vehicle that I don't even know if we've disclosed or not that is coming in really soon is the Lamborghini Revolto. So I did order one of those about six months ago. I have one of the very first ones that are gonna hit the USA. That's due in like two to three months. It's a great color, a great spec. I'm super pumped to have that and go hoon that car. I'm, I'm becoming more and more of a Lamborghini enthusiast, I think, as time passes. So stand by for that car. I do wanna point out one thing is that while we got rid of a lot of cars out of the collection, overall this collection value is gonna go up. When I add this up, I'm probably gonna be a little bit shocked, but we're gonna realize that this, this collection is a better collection than than it was before. I just, I tend to time things really well. I've, I've always been good with timing on when to sell, when to buy. And I think that I sold a lot of these right before the market has already softened. Like it's literally softened in the last three to six months. And a lot of these went just before that happened. And this is also becomes a good time to buy. So I've started buying again after a lot of those left six months ago, I'm starting to look for deals. Not everything is cheap right now, but the Lamborghini SVs have come down. The Roadster came down almost hundred grand from peak COVID pricing. That one may go down a little bit more, but I'm comfortable where it was at and it made sense for me to buy that at this point. I think that one won't depreciate as much as like a base evented or convertible. So timing is on my side and you just wait to see what this collection is gonna look like in a little bit. Now one key vehicle that also left the collection that sets up the new vehicle that I got is my Resvani Hercules 6x6. I had a lot of fun in that. I'm not gonna lie, it was just time for it to go, but we've got a big badass car to replace that that I never thought I would get. Let's go check that out. This is my brand new Mercedes G63 4x4 squared. The vehicle I never thought I would get. What changed me was when I saw Houston Crosses when we were in LA. So what do you think the new 4x4? I think it's, it's the best sick. car I've ever had. Let's go look at it. <laughs> Ready, Aids? Let's show them the, the pretty Ooh. interior. Tommy has been trying to have me get one of these things forever, but I did not like the non-lifted version. I hate the smaller little baby girl versions. I just can't stand them. But seeing this beast, it's so crazy when you park. Do we have a G63 out here that we can park it next to? We're gonna try and compare this with the standard size just so you can see the enormity of it next to one of the base models. But this thing is so freaking fun. First of all, it has a significant amount of carbon all over. Second of all, the side mounted exhaust pipes are just an absolute blast. The huge carbon fiber light bar, 
I mean, that thing makes this thing look like an off-roading machine. The matte black paint, 22 inch wheels on it with some off-road tires, all the badges, bumpers, pretty much every little nuance is black, which makes this thing super sleek. I'm gonna show you the interior in just a second, but it is an awesome contrast color. As you guys know, I love my bright different interiors because they're just cool. This thing has significant braking power. It sounds awesome. Bright red calipers. I don't know if it has some special kind of braking system. We should look into that. And then of course the fifth wheel for the spare because we're also gonna go do some off-roading with this thing. Maybe not on this channel, but you know what? I'm gonna go have some fun with this car. That's what it's built for. I do also wanna point out as I did in the last video when we had uh, seen one of these things. Four by four squared. What's four times four squared? See, using PEMDAS, four times four squared, you solve the four squared first, that's 16, you multiply that by four, that's 64. That is a Mercedes G-Wagon 64. Four by four squared equals 64, because you solve the exponent first, that's 16, then you multiply four by that. So this is my Mercedes 64. AMG 64, okay? At this point, this is well broken in. I've had it for three weeks. My wife loves driving this thing, which is great because we can just integrate this into the daily driver fleet. Check out this awesome interior. Lots of carbon in the inter interior, like a bespoke red color. They probably have a name for it. I don't know what it is. Tommy, do you know what it is? That's a, one of the few times Tommy doesn't know little goofy nuances like that. Cooled, heated, massaging seats. It actually has like a hot stone feature in the massage menu. And this thing is actually like this step is like above my my knee you have to like literally and the problem with the side mounted exhaust tips you almost can't have like an electric fold out step bar so we're going to figure something out with the, uh my wife's only five feet four so we need to figure out how we're going to resolve that for her i also want to mention that whistle Niesel, if you've seen his channel i'm sure you have he's done the g-wagon durability tests these cars are ridiculously durable like yes it it really is a testament to how well they're built. I asked him which car he destroyed that he would buy again, and he's like, hands down, his Mercedes G63. So, he did. and he, he did, yeah. yeah. And and then he and he stuck to his word, and he went and bought one of them. Um, this does have the IWC clock, which Tommy claims is a pretty exclusive, awesome clock company. I know nothing about them. Watch um, manufacturer. <laughs> watch <laughs> manufacturer. See, proof. There's proof. I'm gonna start this thing up. I want you guys to hear how awesome it sounds. As you shut the door on your way out, I want to have these kind folks that are watching listen to the awesome snapping sound of the doors that's like straight from the 80s. Tommy, get that last one. It's off. Ready? Oh, My favorite. I love it. It's so good. Oh my god, look at him. <laughs> I would like, I would, yeah, I just wouldn't drive that one, but this looks amazing. It is a good one to compare it against because it's fully black and murdered out and everything, but there is a startling difference in the two sides. Like, look at these things side by side, it's shocking. And that is literally why I decided to get the G63 4x4 instead of that because I just wouldn't buy that. Anyway, thanks so much for watching. We appreciate you guys so much for all that you do for us. And be sure to like, comment, and subscribe. Thank you.